Hey guys, how's it going? Is that a trick, yo yo? Why is my yo yo coming back up? Can you walk the dog? <laughs> the Offset Yo Yo Podcast. Hey guys. How's it going? So welcome to the second episode of the Offset Yo-Yo Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Vu, two-time Australian national yo-yo champion and yo-yoing YouTuber. And today's guest is a really close friend of mine. And it is none other than Marcus Ko, world champion and multiple-time Singaporean national yo-yo champion. Um, as most of you guys know, Marcus is probably best known for his 2011 World Yo-Yo Contest win. Um, but I, I have had the, the fortune to spend a lot of time with Marcus. I travel to Singapore quite frequently, I think once a year for the Asia Pacific contest. And I always stick around for a little bit longer. So me, Marcus, and a lot of the other Singaporean yo-yo players have hung out quite extensively. So it's been a very surreal kind of moment for me to have idolized Marcus in my earlier years and later on become, become quite close friends. But this has been an awesome conversation. So Marcus, for those of you guys who don't know, started off as a yo-yo and competitor. He then worked his way up, 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 and up, and then ultimately became world champion. Um, he's been sponsored by a multitude of really awesome companies. He was on Turning Point. He was also on Aldi, which is a huge, huge toy brand. And he can now has parlayed that up to make his own company called Throw Revolution. I've had the good fortune of um, staying with him, staying with the team, and ultimately getting a really good look at what he does to make everything happen with Throw Revolution. So the conversation we have is super wide ranging. It starts off a lot with competition, his pre-competition rituals, how much he practices, um, how he learns new tricks, how he bounces back from failures. And then we go on and we shift gears a little bit. We go to the business side of things. We go get like a little bit of an insight to the nitty gritty of yo-yo companies. We talk about um, team cultures and how Marcus ultimately determines the players he wants on Throw Revolution. So without further ado, I hope you guys really enjoy this wide ranging conversation between me and world champion Marcus Ko. Hello everyone and um, welcome Marcus to the show. What's up, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's awesome to see you. So this is world champion Marcus Co. And um, yeah, long time, low time yo-yo buddy of mine. <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's it's good to finally be doing this. It's good to have you on the show. So um, I think we'll get straight into it. Um, let's let's just start off with some you know generic questions. Let's just start off with you know how did you how did you start yo-yoing and and more importantly when did you start to have ambitions of being the one A world champion? Okay, so um, I started yo-yoing in two thousand and three. When I was 10 years old. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, I started wanting to become world champion when I first started yo-yo. <laughs> so, um, when I was a kid, the, um, I started because of super yo-yo, right? Um, if you don't know, um, for those of you who don't know the, the recent yo-yo players that just came to join our yo-yo yeah. community, super yo-yo is a anime, Japanese anime about yo-yoing. Oh, okay. So kind of um, like Blazing nice. Teens? Yeah, kind of like Blazing Teens, but with a little bit more <laughs> meaningful storyline, I would say. Okay. And outrageous animation, as <laughs> usual. <laughs> yeah. So when I was a kid, I was pretty am amazed by the animations and everything. And the main character in the television series had, had a dream of becoming a world champion. <laughs> so... Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to mimic the behavior of that character. So I also decided, hey, uh, um, hey there, uh, I also want to become a world champion. Yeah. So that was just um, a spur of a moment thing. Like when I was a kid, I see the main character. He's a role model to me. He wants to become a world champion. So I wanted to become a world champion. So that was like, yeah, that was like a childish spur of a moment thing. Yeah, yeah. But, 
when I got serious on becoming a world champion was when I felt that I became better. That was when I was more serious about my dream. Was there like a specific yeah. time, say like, you know, you, you won in 2011, but was it like 2007 that you're like, oh, maybe I could really win this or 2000? Like, was there a specific moment where you're like, oh shit, like I could actually, I could actually win this? Uh, okay, the fine thing is the specific moment where I decided I want to win this was not the time where I became good. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> the, it's not because I realized, hey, I'm pretty good. I stand a chance of becoming world champion. Mm. It was during, uh, how, does, how do I put it? It was during five, five years into my Euro career. Mm. Like, uh, let's say, 2003, I've been playing here for five years until 2008, yeah, mm. 2007, 2008. Yeah. I decided like, hey, actually like, I've been playing here for quite a long time and I'm still pretty bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much better, but I'm, I'm improving at a rate where compared in relative to the rest of the year players, I'm still like nowhere near the top. <laughs> and wait, just out so, of curiosity, who were you comparing yourself to at this point in time? Uh, okay, so <laughs> uh, back then, it was just um, the people who started yo yoing was <laughs> Ikui. Yeah. <laughs> and you know that guy, right? So for uh, those of you guys who don't know Lim Ikui, he's in, like a uh, 4A yo-yo prodigy. He's, he's, he's a... He's, the, hello, he's the legend hello. in Singapore. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Hello? Can you, can you still hear me? Yo. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, hear you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know I could, right? Yeah. He started yo-yoing at the same time as me, but the thing is that he won... He won on his very first year of competing. <laughs> so I was like, like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> I tried so hard to, uh, to practice a new trick and you just come in and like, <laughs> and he take more than, he take more than one division, you know, he, he not only took, um, off string division, he kind of took like, off string, free hand, and after that, he was, shortly after he took the 1A division. Oh, he took 1A as well. Jesus. <laughs> And there's like adding insult to injury. It's like, <laughs> you don't even try, you know? Okay, maybe he tried, but definitely not as hard as me in 1A. Mm. And, uh, so like, I, co- I compare myself to IQ, I compare myself to people around me. I'm like, like, what the hell? I, I tried so hard. Dude. Yeah. I couldn't even qualify finals in my own national freestyle. Mm. My own <laughs> We just come in and I take everything and like, hey, yeah, what's up? And I'll see you. Okay, bye. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, that's um, that's that's really um interesting in a sense because um, yeah, no, obviously, you know, at at that point, like that would discourage a lot of players, and that would probably be more or less the the end of their competitive go at yo-yoing. But that wasn't really the end for you. That was more the beginning, right? Yeah, that is how how would I say yeah uh, I how would I describe myself? I I would say that I'm I'm a super try hard person. <laughs> I I don't like losing. Yeah. So when I lose when I lose, right, I really um I try not to complain about it. I just complain to myself. Like yeah. I just get mad at myself in my head, but I, I don't I don't let my feelings get out of me and I tell people like, mm. like, hey, hey, you're shit, man. Like, yeah, oh, you're really, no, I, I don't, I don't let that get to my head. But yeah, I yeah. try, I always just convert that uh, negative energy and turn it to, turn it to action, basically. Yeah. So I, I guess a kind of follow-up question that is like, you know, you've, you know, you, you started yo-yoing and you weren't, you were never the most talented yo-yo player. Um, but you know, yep, you you did right. eventually become the the best in the world, and the best in the world at one A as well. That's the most competitive division, the most competitive you know arena, and you won at a time where it was very very competitive. So, how did you how did you bridge the gap between talent 
And yeah, how did you basically overcome players that, you know, were, were probably like working pretty hard and more talented and how did you eventually kind of overcome that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I recognize the fact that firstly, I recognize the fact that I have my flaws. Yep. Like everyone has flaws, but you need to recognize what are your flaws and actually work on them. So to me, my flaws in my, in my personal experience, my flaws is that I learn tricks at a much slower pace compared to others. Mm-hmm. So for example, if um, I could, were, were to learn ally hop, if someone were to learn ally hops, they would take like maybe one day to learn. Mm. I would about two or three days. Yeah. So generally I take a longer time to learn than <laughs> Uh, others and I recognize that. So what I do to um, make up for this lack of talent is that um, I was prepared to sacrifice uh, whatever time that was needed to allow me to bridge the gap and reach a level of competitiveness where I am ready to compete at international competitions. Mm, okay. So, um, uh, the the key word here is um willing to sacrifice some things and put in more time and effort than needed mm. to master what I need to to master. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that I <laughs> um empathize with a hundred percent, probably if not more. Like for those of you guys who don't know, um I I know, I know. <laughs> Marcus already knows. Marcus says he's slow at learning tricks, and you know, compared to Aiku, he's probably pretty slow, but me compared to Marcus is, is like another ball game. Like it would take me about like six or seven hours that'll take um that'll like <laughs> that most Man, people will learn a trick. So compared to me, I thought I was slow. I felt good when you struggling to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess I guess um something that you you told me um earlier on was that you while you were trying to improve, you would consistently either make a trick a week or you would try to learn a trick a week. Uh-huh. Yep. And yeah, that's was was that something that you would say um helped you bridge the talent gap? Okay, this is a really um how do I say this? This is a really interesting question because um it's a little bit difficult to to explain how I'm able to create tricks a week. I, learning tricks a week is uh, possible. Mm. I would say um, um, most people can do that. Yeah, and even those who have less talent or those who cannot learn so much, we are still able to learn it at a much slower, but just at a much slower pace. Yeah, but for the creating tricks, um, that year we are created tricks once a week. Um, it's a little bit um, it's a little bit interesting because. That was the time where I first went to the World Year Contest in 2007. Mm-hmm. So um, at that time, I was in Singapore champion. I'm sorry, I went to the World Year Contest in 2008 yeah. when I was not Singapore champion. So uh, that time, I, um, we spent our own money. I, actually, I spent my father's mother money to mm. go to the World Year Contest. Pretty expensive for Singaporeans to go there. So at, at least three thousand mm. um, dollars. That's about two point five thousand USD. Yeah. To go to world the flight alone. Mm. So I went to what what the trigger event was the thing the event that triggered me most was the Royal Contest. Um, we spent so much time and money mm. to go to the Royal Contest to compete at the Royal Contest just to find out that. I went to the US, <laughs> paid three thousand dollars, flew for more than thirty hours of flight. Yeah, just to go on stage for one minute <laughs> and qualify and go back to Singapore. <laughs> did you, and you so, didn't so qualify that, that year. I did not qualify. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
that's that was when I realized how far my skill level was compared to the rest of the world. Mm. And like, I mean, I already realized that my skill level was, I was not good enough, but yep. going, going to worlds and facing the reality, harsh reality itself, <laughs> made me, made me like, realize it even more. Yeah, It yeah. was even more when I went to worlds and the reality was right <laughs> in front of me. I mean, the results shit was right in front of me. Like, I got 26. That was like, <laughs> far, far, far off from the cutoff point. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's something that I have experienced with as well. I think the only time I competed in Worlds was in Japan and I was like 47th in semifinal. So I was a long way off. And it's a, it's a humbling experience because you're like, well, I mean, I'm kind of cool in my own country, but in the world stage, it's, uh, it's not very fun getting your ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, and but yeah, but then going on from there, so this was when you decided to learn or create a trick a week. Yes, because not not only I I realized that my skill level is is uh, far off than the rest of the people, but I felt really bad because I had to I was wasting my dad's money, I was mm. wasting his time, and I was wasting my time too. Mm. Like I mean, my dad probably doesn't feel this way, but as as his son, I I feel bad because. Like, this is the one coming out with the money. So, yeah. And I understand he's supporting me, but I still feel really bad. So mm. I, I told myself like, okay, this is the period where I need to, um, stop spending my dad's money mm. and try to get good. <laughs> and if possible, get a sponsor. Sure. Yeah. And that is the period where I, I got really, really mad at myself, but, that is the kind of like the trigger event that that forced me to create one new trick every week. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, the funny thing is, uh, I created those tricks back on the plane home from <laughs> USA to Singapore. So uh, we had like thirty hours of flight. I was like, on those thirty hours, I didn't watch any movies on the plane. I just like, I took my yo yo, my date. I just let it. Um, I just uh throw a dead sleeper. Yeah, not spinning. The ears not spinning. So I just try to create some new mounts or new tricks on the seat and just oh wow, just kind of fall into place. Yeah. Is that and and did those did that create any of the distinctive combos that you use to win later on? Because you know when you won, you had like a very intimidating set of like tech tricks and suicides that were very, very ahead of their time. They were very difficult to copy because they were very difficult. So like, was there, was there a famous combo of yours that came out of that? Or was this kind of just the the beginning? Uh, yes, to be honest, some of my tricks that I use today is a result of the <laughs> anger or the, the trigger event that I had in the airplane. So yeah. Some of the tricks that I created in an airplane, I still use it now. Okay. Yeah, interesting. All right. Um, so that's interesting. Um, yeah. So I guess it, you've covered the motivation as to why you created a trick a week, but could you kind of dig into, say, how you went about creating a trick a week because like let's say i wanted to do that right now i immediately i'd just be like okay i've run out of ideas don't know what to do now Mm -hmm. i'm just doing the same mounts over and over again i've got no inspiration how would you how would you like do it from a technical standpoint yeah okay so this is the interesting thing i I believe right that when it comes to creating tricks there, there are many there are many arguments or there are many points about creating tricks like some say like you cannot force in creating a trick, which I think is pretty true. Yeah. Some say you just need to have fun and and somehow you create new tricks. You need to make mistakes once in a while. Once you make sometimes when you make mistakes, you are able to find out things that you weren't able to see or weren't able to think about in, in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll say all of the above actually. Okay. I'll say sometimes when you make mistakes, I create tricks. Um when I'm having fun and create tricks, but there's this one element that I 
would like to highlight that stands out from the rest. Um, that is thinking about yo-yo, thinking about tricks when you're not playing yo-yo. Okay. That's the thing. So like when I was in a plane, I'm not doing anything. I'm thinking about tricks. Mm. That is the period where you can create the most tricks, I would say. Okay. And so- other motivation factors come into play. Like if you really want to win worlds or if you have been working on a trick, but you can't, you seem to make a stumbling block. When you are calm and you're thinking about it, when you're really bored and you're just, Basically, you're in your zone just thinking about your trick. That is the period where I would say you create the most trick. Hmm. Okay. For me, is there a particular um, particular time of day or a particular area when you when you tend to think of your your best tricks or when you tend to make more tricks than usual? I, I wouldn't say it's a particular time of day, but I would say it's your particular mood. Okay. Oh, yeah, feeling that day and your particular motivation. Okay. So like, let, let's say if I'm I'm eating something, I wouldn't think about yo-yo because my motivation is in front of me is I'm hungry and in yep. food. But back then when I was like on the flight back to Singapore, my motivation was just yo-yo. I had no other distractions beside me. Mm. And my mood was my mood was pretty angry. My mood was yep. yeah, just about yo 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 yo. It it so, seems like uh, anger motivates you to do a lot well in yo-yoing as well. <laughs> I wouldn't say anger. I would say frustration. I would say yeah, yeah, frustration okay. and yeah. Um, and of course, of course, I would say like um, there's a certain I would say there's a balance with everything. Too much of everything is not good. So like too much of frustration or anger is not good. But the right amount of like frustration is what, what was needed to push me to the edge and get me started on creating new tricks. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, because you are too angry or too frustrated. You will start like blaming yourself and saying like, Oh, I'm not good. Got it. I'm not good enough. And they will send you on a downward spiral. And yeah, yeah. that's actually not healthy for you. Yeah. 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 I would say. Um, Okay, so you you've decided to consistently start creating a trick a week, but you know, like it's it's still a long way. Like I can just imagine it right now. Let's say I just completely tanked worlds. Um, I'm on the plane. I'm trying to make new tricks, and I guess you're on the right track now. But that's still a long way away from being a a a world champion in one A. How did you like? <laughs> How did that evolve to get to the point where like you were like one of the best in the world or the best in the world? So um one one important factor <laughs> is um our local year community was pretty active. Yeah. So when I had created a new trip during that time period, right? Mm. Uh comp- small mini competitions were still happening. Mm. So I would say the community actually had a part to keep my motivation uh, constant, <laughs> keep me interested in my yo-yoing career and allows me to um, test myself and see where where I have improved so far. Mm, that's interesting. Shortly after, the, shortly after my failure after the world con- contest, about one month later, there is a um, small regional competition. So I was able to test out the new tricks mm. and was able to get first place. Interestingly, mm. yeah, I think that was my first time getting, that was my first time getting first place after coming back from those, my very first win. Mm. Ever. That's, yeah. that, that's interesting because I mean, coming from, I mean, it, this isn't true of all countries, but especially most countries, um, we don't have a whole lot of yo-yo competitions. So, you know, let's say Australian nationals, there's only one, one competition. So you bomb that one and then you just have to wait till next time. You don't have that constant feedback loop. Right. So, um, that's, that's really important that you, you mentioned that, Oh, well, there was a, there was a competition the month after. And then I had a chance to, to test what I created. Yeah, that's, that's true. I think, I think, um, the local community is, pretty essential or pretty important to part of my success. Mm. Because uh, 
here in Singapore, the people that are running the yo-yo scene mm. are really passionate yo-yo players. Like, uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure we talked about this at AP. I yeah. told you, right? Like, people running the yo-yo scene, they they're just giving unconditional love to the yo-yo yep. community. A hundred percent, yeah. Me and like bleed financially, but they still try their best to mm. come out with whatever they have and try and sustain the your community. Um. So I guess the next question I have is, how long did you keep up this making a trick a week routine? Was this something that you kept up until 2000 and 2010? Or was this something that you slowly discarded and you got your, your set of really competitive tricks and then um, you started focusing on practicing those instead of making new ones? Of course, during that time was 2008. Yep. So I still... Had- uh, I won one in 2011, so I still had like three years of improvement. Exactly, yeah. That's what I'm trying to yeah, like pin still, out. I still, I still try to keep to my routine of trying to create new tricks every week while playing yo-yo every day. Mm-hmm. But once in a while, um, of course, this progress started to slow down. I started to create, it, I started to create less tricks then. Um, and uh, like, I couldn't create as much trick as I started when I first started this when my whole motivation was at an all time high. Yeah. But I still, I still, um, I recognize that fact. I recognize that fact that there is a stumbling block at every point of the way. Mm. So as per usual, if I can't create a new trick, I refine my tricks. I, I work on my current set of tricks and see if I could create something new from there or improve on that. At the same time, I watch your videos every day mm-hmm. I I slow down tricks um, when it comes to your competition whatever competition Japan Nationals US Nationals I watch everyone from the first place to the last place okay yeah so I I don't I don't only just watch the first place because I strongly believe that no matter how good you are you still have to watch out for every. you still have to look at everyone like you still okay. have like, something to look the first place guy, you still have something to learn from the last place guy at finals. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. See, that's... All these um, this, um, freestyles, all these elements <laughs> that I learned from the first place to the last place allow me to create new tricks easier or allow me to invent new tricks from those new tricks that I've learned from those videos easier. Yeah. 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 Um, that, that's, that's interesting. Um, if like, let's say we had like a pie chart of, of your yo-yoing practice time. And I know you don't have like, well, I I don't believe you have the exact numbers, but if you could say like how much of that pie would be allocated to say building tricks, how many, how many of those would just be practicing tricks you already know? And how many of those would be like watching yo-yo tricks and, um, you know, looking at other people's in competition, would it be like 60% practice and then, you know, uh, 20%, um, making tricks and, you know, the rest is watching or is it like, how would that be split up? It's, it's a little bit difficult to put a number on those, yep. but I would say that during that time when I was looking at creating new tricks is, it's normally the time where there is no competition. Yep. There's no no uh competition in the near future. Mm. And so what's what's the near I, future for you? Um it was right after the competition and I was still looking at new tricks. So okay. yep. there's definitely no competition for the next two months or something like okay. that. Okay. Yep. So um yeah, that was where I created the new tricks and um you cannot really put a number to it because when you're in the zone, when you're started when you're starting to experiment with these new tricks, you just, there is no systematic approach to, to, hey, I need to dedicate this amount of time to creating new tricks. Like, this is where your creative juices get flowing, right? Mm. So that is where I just start and I stop when I feel like it. Basically. Okay. So there's no, I, I would say like I spend most of my time like trying to find out the construction of my tricks. Okay. In that period. So I, I would say it's the quality, back, back to what I said previously, it's the quality and the amount of motivation and inspiration you had. 
Mm. Yeah. So let's say like, you know, right after the competition um, and you're playing with your yo-yo, is this mostly time spent trying to make, like, do you have the goal of I'm, I'm trying to look for a new mount, I'm trying to look for a new trick, or is it I'm just drilling through some old combos because I want to refine these? Hey, yeah, that's the thing. Um, I do both, but the motivation <laughs> starts to really come in when I find something new, like, hey, actually I could put a new element in this trick, or actually I could do this trick in a different way. Yeah. So when I'm able to unintentionally or somehow find something new, that mm. is where the focus is in. Because yeah. as you, 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 we all know, uh, if you are to do your combo again and again, it's, it's a body memory thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we expect. Mm. It's um, part of our natural memory. But when we are able to find out like we could do things differently, that is where the more focus comes in. And that's where we, yeah. there's a, our flow of daily, daily routine and we, the focus starts to come in and that's where our creative juices start to come in and find out like, Hey, actually I could do this shit in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I guess th- this is more of a side question, but when around about the time you started to like rise to power, I guess, um, Singapore, at least in my eyes, and I was a huge fan of all the Singaporean players, even before I ever went to Singapore. So Christopher Chia, Daryl Mitchell, this was really kind of not just the peak for you, but the peak for all three. Uh-huh. of you and like how yep. did how did like having those guys around you kind of propel you forward I guess did that help or did it hurt or like what was what role did they kind of play in your whole development as world champion yeah I, I would say it helped to a great deal to be honest because um, like I said right in the past um, on my road to improvement I look at Japan Nationals US Nationals mm. so most of my, I would say, combos, not tricks. Yep. My competitive combos came from the Japanese freestyles. Yep. So it, it was not really innovating. Mm. It was more of um, trying to do, trying to make what's already there even better. Like yep. for example, um, failing combos or whatever, whatever that it was in the meta during that year. Yeah. Whatever that was in that year. But, um, the time when Singapore became good, Singapore started bec- becoming the innovators. Mm. We started changing the trend. We are the yeah, Singapore yeah. who made trends, who made the new tricks trendy yet again. Mm. So that was the time where the creative juices really came in and mm. allowed me to create completely new stuff again. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because it was interesting, like, you know, Christopher Chia had the inverted stuff and you had a few inverted tricks as well. And like, I feel as if you guys really made that as well. And then obviously the horizontals and then the behind the back horizontals. Um, I guess a question for you was that like, how did you come up with the idea of that super long behind the back combo? Where did that come from? Huh. Because behind uh, the back tricks have been done for ages, right? But no one had ever done yeah. one extensively as you did. And you were like the first one to do it and first one to do it since. So where did that come from? That's a good question because I completely can't even remember. I don't <laughs> even remember how I created it. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I think, I think, okay, uh, let me try and remember if I, could, yeah. if I remember this quite a bit. I think during that time, um, a lot of tricks was very um, stagnant. Mm. Like when you look at a yo-yo freestyle, your eyes do not move much because it's all in one box. Yep. I would say. So I decided to change things a little by by having the audience, like when when they look at a freestyle, right? The general audience, I want them to I want their eyes or I want their head to move when they see me play yo-yo. Mm. Okay. So I want it to be more bad. I want my tricks to be more special, special, I would say. Yeah. Okay. And so that was when I thought, hey, why not do behind the back? And I was pretty good at behind the back in the first place. Okay. Because of 
the way my body is or, or something, I would say. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I, I wanted <laughs> to create a competitive behind the back trick. But yeah. I, I think that's what created the trick, I mm. guess. But I, I can't really remember exactly how, how I was able to create the trick. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, okay. Let's, um, let's, let's take a bit of a, bit of a step forward now. Um, I, you know, I had the good fortune of hanging out with you for a couple of years in AP now, and, you know, you're, you're still quite in the competitive scene. Um, and I was just asking, do you have a pre yo-yo competition routine? Because I remember, you know, Singapore, we went out and we got massages before, um, before your, your one, a final. So is there, is there a structured mm-hmm. way you get in the zone for, uh, for yo-yo competitions, especially when you care about winning or the outcome? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so what does that look like? Most, most people would say this is superstition, mm-hmm. but um, I, I think it's superstition too, but I I would love to, I, I still believe it, regardless yep. of whether it's um, it works or not. Yeah. But to me, I like pampering myself and I'm, uh, I'm a strong, I'm, I'm a strong believer of feeling good before you do go up and do your big thing, big event and stuff. Sure. So in this case, my big, my finals was the next day and I'm a strong believer of making myself feel good. So I want to go for a massage, relax my body mm. because obviously the past few days I've been practicing. My body is a little, little bit stiff. Mm. I want to pamper myself a little bit, um, go for a massage, uh, drink something, what would you drink? Drink something good, eat something good. Um, okay. Eat my favorite food or whatever it is. Is yeah, it like, is there yeah, something um, specific you drink or something specific you eat? Nothing specific, but basically do whatever I feel like doing. Okay. If I want to, if I want to eat um McDonald's, I'll go eat McDonald's. If I want to drink Starbucks, I'll go drink Starbucks. Right. Basically, I myself a little bit more, I would say. Okay. And let's say this is, um, this is, you know, day of the competition and you've got like a 30 minute window before you're about to go on stage. Do you have like a pre-competition ritual that you do every time before a competition or is it more or less just winging it? Uh, no, really, I just relax. Yeah. Relax because 30 minutes before you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to cram any more practice into yep. your freestyle. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, because I, I've already done my homework, right? It's the same as preparing for an exam. If if you have already done your homework, you have studied long beforehand, you you shouldn't need to do any last minute revision or practice. Yep. Same concept. Okay. Yeah. So actually, this is a question I'd be curious in. How much do you practice on the actual day? Is it one or two free, uh, freestyle run-throughs? Do you... I know there are a lot of players who just don't, I know there are players who definitely run through and cram a lot of their freestyle practice on the day, but what does that look like for you in an, in an optimum space? I, I think it all depends on the player's personal preference. But what does that Some look players, like for you? Um, okay, for me, for me, it's like, um, I would still practice, mm. but it will be a lot more toned down compared to my previous, my normal routine of practice. So let's say if I would, I would practice like one or two hours the past few days mm. on that day on a competition, I'll practice for maybe 30 minutes Okay, and then I'm done. All yeah. right. Actually, this is, this is kind of a question that's, that's also kind of interesting to me when you were, you know, in the, in the phase of like growth and like, you know, man, I suck and I need to totally get better. How many hours of yo-yoing were you doing a day? Probably at least two hours, I would say. Okay, at least two a day. Yeah, yeah. and sometimes let's say, uh, I would say it's remember back to what I was saying. It's not on the set amount of time you, that you dedicate your time to. Mm. Doesn't mean that oh, if I intentionally dedicate one thousand hours of practice, I'll get good. No, mm. it doesn't work this way. It all depends on your motivation. It all depends on your quality, not the the quality of the time spent playing yo-yo, not the quantity of time spent playing yo-yo. Mm. Okay? So it's, 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 uh, more, yeah, it's yeah. quantity of time uh, to a certain extent, but more importantly is the quality, quality of time. So 
sometimes once in a while when before I sleep, I suddenly think of one very interesting concept. Mm. I just wake up and then, yeah, it's it's not on the amount of time. I, I do spend a, a lot of time. Yeah. But the times <laughs> the, where I spend playing yo-yo is, it counts. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's where motivation is at the all-time highest. If I were to spend playing, if I were to spend time playing yo-yo and my motivation is at, at all-time low, I'll, I'll probably not create any new tricks and I'll probably not enjoy playing yo-yo during that time. Okay. So, yeah. Is is there a, is there a specific way you um you can deliberately increase your motivation or or increase your energy to make sure that like let's say you only have like half an hour to practice is there a way that you would increase your energy increase your motivation so that it, yeah what I'm trying to ask is 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 there any way that you can boost the quality of your your yo-yoing time the, the only way you could. Um, I would say uh, open inverted comma deliberately push boost your motivation is your is how how much you want to be world champion or how how motivated you are in your yoing because yeah. like if generally because I am very motivated myself yeah so the more the more motivated I am the more frequently I want to play your yo and yeah. it's a natural thing it's okay. a natural thing. So if I don't want to play yo-yo, I, I don't play yo-yo basically. Okay, sure. Yeah. It's, just natural, it's just natural for me to say that I want to play yo-yo. I want to spend most of my time playing yo-yo because I'm motivated. Right? Okay. As uh, compared to right now, let's say um, um, your mo- my motivation is not that strong. Like right now, I don't feel like playing yo-yo. So, so even if I were to force myself to play yo-yo, I probably would not, it will not, it probably will not be a very fruitful sure. practice session or whatever you call it. Yeah. Is, are there any ways you, you boost your energy before playing for like, before yo-yoing? Not, not, not really. I would say those, this, this energy boost that you're looking for right, mm. is directly proportional to how much you want to win competition or how much you really like to, how much you really, for the people who don't compete too much, yeah. how much they really love your yo it, it just comes out to two things. Mm. How much you want to win yeah. or if you're not a competitor, how much you love playing your yo It's sure. just these two factors. More like a, if, uh, like, it, a, like a process over like um, reward kind of thing. You just need to enjoy the process, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. And how much you enjoy playing your yo yeah. Okay. Same same to anything in life. Like not even you if you enjoy um playing computer games or <laughs> you enjoy playing basketball, you naturally just want to spend time on it. Mm. Right? Yeah, if you can't you can't spend time on something you don't enjoy. Yep. Yeah. So I would say it's also the same for yo yo. Sure. Okay. All right. So I guess, you know, to kind of tie it all up, like it, it, it was it was really fascinating because you know all, all this years spent on growth all this years spending you know creating a trick a week and refining and watching out for every other competitor and ultimately it's 2011 um you get up on stage and you know it, if if you were to just watching it and i remember that in 2011 i was watching the freestyle on the live stream like it looks like you seriously tanked that freestyle like how did you keep on playing when you knew everything was falling apart in the 2011 freestyle uh, actually I, I i was pretty uh in my mind, I, I thought I, was, I, I lost the competition already, but <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I didn't expect to win either, but um, a freestyle is a freestyle. Yeah. You need to have showmanship no matter what. Mm. Uh, uh, during that time, there was no such rule on showmanship, but whatever it is, whatever performance <laughs> you do, you still need to have showmanship, I believe. Yeah. And um, a freestyle is never over until it is over. Yeah. So, I know I make mistakes, but I just just move on, you know. Just yeah. you just have to complete the freestyle because that's the only thing you can do. Uh, to uh, that is to not give up. Mm. Just not give up yourself. Like even though you're not gonna win, you still do your best, right? Yeah. That's what what everyone tries to do. Even 
even let's say let's say um I wasn't a world champion during that period or anybody who screws up for that matter, yeah. they still try their best to do their tricks. Mm. Uh, to do complete their freestyle. So yeah, I would say like I I think I did a pretty good job um completing my freestyle despite those mistakes. Because, yeah. Yeah. because uh, I can say that I did not make any mis- any much any more further mistakes other than the three the mm. two major mistakes. Yeah, that's yeah, it was interesting yeah. because I rewatched it and um you know on face value it looks like absolutely terrible because you know you're changing out yo's every like couple of minutes but you know if you really look at it there aren't a lot of small misses within the tricks themselves. Yeah. And so, to be honest I completed the routine the way yeah, the way my freestyle was supposed to be. I did every trick that was in the three minutes. Okay. Basically. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I guess, you know, to kind of like tie it all up, what did it, you know, you're on stage. What did it feel like when you finally won the the World Yo-Yo Contest after all those years of, of practice and all those years of of being second best or, or being not good enough? Like what, what did that feel like to finally come out on top? Uh, I mean, man, like <laughs> I didn't expect to win at all, man. Actually, like I was on stage, I was, I was like, can we get this over and done with? Really, I, I don't want to be on stage anymore. Like, uh, I'm a disgrace to myself. I'm a disgrace to Singapore. Like, uh, I want to get this over and done with. But <laughs> when it, when they announced uh, second was um, Sebastian Block, um, mm. I, I I thought the winner was either Paul Kerber. And okay. I played a Paul Kerber Winston Kimmet because their freestyle were really, really clean. Yeah. So like uh, I'm like, I'm ready to lose, man. I, I went up on stage ready to lose. Just I I just, personally thought um Hiroyuki Suzuki would win that year. But um yeah. But yeah, go on. Yes. Um so basically I, I, I thought Jen to me, I thought Jensen or Paul Kerber was about to win. And I was ready to lose. But when they when they announced my name, I was very, very, uh, very, very shocked. Mm. So uh if you were watching a live stream, you could literally see my face turning red <laughs> yeah. in that one. And <laughs> yeah, basically it's like it's surreal, like Yeah. How, how do I put it? <laughs> it's basically I dream of becoming world champion every day like yeah before becoming world champion and it's like getting rejected by by the girl you love every year <laughs> to, to me my, my love was yo-yo yeah so in this case I'm, my number one priority or my number one love in my life was yo-yo so it's like it's like having the love of your life saying no to you. You're not good enough every year, but at the end of the day, when you finally put in all the work, yeah, you know, it finally means something, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Put in, my case was after I put in eight years of your practice, trying to nurture and be my best for <laughs> whatever I love, mm. for the thing I love. And to hear, to hear the yo-yo competition in this case, to hear, your the love of your life saying yes you are yeah <laughs> i've accepted you yes you are the world champion yeah yep. it just means a lot yeah <laughs> Man, I'm 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 getting goosebumps just uh just thinking about it like because it was such a <laughs> such a journey you've been on right yeah it, it is a journey it is all right but um mm-hmm. all right so i think i kind of want to um switch kind of switch gears here so that mm-hmm. was that was a lot of the past i guess and that's a lot of what you were i mean i i feel as if when i first met you that was kind of the impression i had but you know you've been doing a lot since um a lot since 2011 so um <laughs> yeah i think let's let's go into kind of the throw revolution side of things so for those of you guys who don't know marcus <laughs> Marcus is the owner of Throw Revolution, a, uh, a Singaporean yo-yo company. And, um, you know, uh, are you currently currently working right now? Uh, no, I'm still doing Throw Revolution full-time. Sure. Okay, so what is it like um, operating a yo-yo company full-time? What, what, what does that look like? Oh, uh, 
<laughs> not fun at all. Actually, like, uh, uh, I think everybody knows, like, when you put dollars and cents into your passion, yep. it doesn't really become a passion. Mm. Um, for me, in my case, it, it is still a passion because mm. one of the crazy people who really love yo-yo, yep. like, you have to be a certain amount of crazy to 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 love your your like mm. to be really really better in anything in life basically sure that's that's what like it's one thing to be good in your yo but it's a whole new <laughs> level to be really good and really love yo yo yeah all right so, so like can you can you take us through because obviously you know uh, like I I work a nine to five and then you know anytime I have outside that nine to five, that's when I kind of work on offset. But for you, what is your, what is your working day look like? Do you wake up and then answer emails and then work on designs for new yo-yos? And like, what is, what is the, uh, a, a day in the life of the CEO of throw revolution kind of look like? Okay. So, um, I think, I think we can all agree on this. Um, whenever any, anyone, uh, tries to start a year company, um, you or me for that matter. Yeah. Um, our main motivation, um, is, is def- uh, our main motivation is definitely not to make money. I mean, that is, that is important, but when it comes to making money, we are better off working a normal job, right? Exactly. Yeah. Other thing. Yeah. That is, yeah. But our top priority is, um, to improve the experience of the yo-yo community and mm. try to expand our try to expand the yo-yo community try to expand get more new players to join our yo-yo community because um, that is what keeps the yo-yo community alive yep uh, yep it, it, it's not, money is not what keeps our yo community I mean it, it, it is but the main thing is <laughs> new players yep. and motivated players mm. are the one that keeps the community alive because that in turn in turns translate to new tricks yeah new tricks translate to showing them on instagram yeah showing them on instagram translate to the audience like me and you yeah so like, wow that trick is nice mm. and that in turn translates to inspiration and it all go go yep. to one huge cycle again mm. yeah Passion, passion, inspiration, inspiration, new, translate to new players, new players translate to, it, it goes one full circle. Sure. So yeah. If all this comes into place, that means more new players, that means more new tricks. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, and that is, and that is when, when we are able to nail that down, which I would say like, that's what we are trying to do every time. Yeah. When we are able to nail that down, that's where the money comes in. Yeah. Absolutely. If if your focus is on the money, then that that is that doesn't that doesn't come into play. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Um, so you know, what do your day to day activities kind of look like surrounding you know, um, throw revolution? Okay, so uh, <laughs> most of the time I will spend my day uh, um, send preparing my parcels to the post office. Yeah, sending my euros. So post are, office. are you personally uh, shipping them yourself? Yeah, yeah, I, I ship them myself. So okay, I'm shipping them myself. Oh and wow! So, so it's just you packaging and shipping them. Uh, yes, and I have my mother helping me once in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. that's kind of the setup we have have it offset as well. <laughs> I, I think you know it too, right? Like, yeah, it's a little it's, bit of effort to make sure, like. Like, like <laughs> preparing all the packages. Yeah, because we we want to make sure our package is safely um taped up, safely sealed up to make sure like no water can go through the seep through the yeah the holes in the packages. And yeah, stuff yeah. Like this, it's um uh, it's an unglamorous <laughs> part, but it's it's a very important part of the whole yo yo contest experience. I mean yo 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 company experience. Yeah, and sometimes um, when we store our yo-yos, mm. I, I don't know about Australia, but when I store my yo-yos in Singapore, it's a little bit more humid. Ah, uh, yeah. So be- 
my yo-yo out, I want to make sure the bearing is still well lubricated. Yeah. Because it's it always happens like like when your bearings travel over the air mm. to the other country, the air is very dry. Yeah. And uh, it's always um we always I don't know we always have this um customer feedback like even. As a customer myself, when I buy a new yo, sometimes I find like, hey, the bank is a little bit dried up. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. but that's where I realized like it's actually not really the 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 yo yo company's fault. But mm. sometimes if you never seal it up properly, if you never uh, do do whatever is necessary, when your yo travels over the air, your bank can get it gets dried up pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. So that comes into factor too because. As a as a as a consumer and a, mm. a business owner myself, I want to make sure my the yo-yos that I'm selling to customers are in top condition. Mm. So I want to test the yo-yos. Yo-yo bearings are well lubricated. Mm. So that is where I will use my. I'll put on my glove. I'll throw the yo-yo one time and yeah. see if the bearing is well. Lubricated. If it's not, I will just change the new yo-yo and. Yeah, make sure it's well lubricated. Sure. Of course, doesn't mean when I do that, right? Doesn't mean my bearings are hundred percent lubricated. It's still there's still one one chance that that um my yo yo could bearings could get faulty. But I guess that is why we try our best to make sure our yo yos are in top condition for our customers. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. All right, so I guess these are the more things like uh, it's a little bit. I don't think it's something that the the listener wants to hear because it's all of nitty gritty stuff. But no, but I, I, this, I, yeah. What else do you do? I mean, I feel as if like there's this huge kind of um, sheet pullover. Like no one really knows what people who own yo-yo companies do. So like, what else do you do you do? I, I'm kind of curious as well. Yeah, only you can understand, but. In the past, when I was a consumer, mm. I don't really care about what you guys do to try and. I just care about. At the end of the day, I just care about my yo-yo. I want it to be good. Yeah, exactly. So, for the general audience, I don't think they'll be interested to hear like the amount of detail I put in yeah. to my yo-yos because it's very long-winded and a little bit probably a little bit too yeah too long-winded for them to hear. But I I can just say that long story short, we try to make sure that everything is in top condition, no matter how tiring or how, mm. how, how much time it takes to make sure the yo-yo reaches you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. This is the next, and this is kind of, this is a personal question as well as a, a question that I think a lot of people would find interesting. Um, so, I've been to AP a couple years now, and most of the time I've, I've been hanging out with the Throw Revolution crew. Um, you know, and, you know, I've, I've been, been sharing hotels with these guys and I've, I've been kind of there, um, almost as like a front row seat to how the throw revolution team kind of operates. And, you know, in, at least in my, my eyes, and I've, I've been, you know, like really close with a lot of the players. There's a huge team culture. Everyone likes one another and everyone really kind of enjoys the brand. Um, so I guess starting question is what do you look for when, when sponsoring yo-yo players? Mm, okay. So, um, how, do, how do I put this? I'd like to say that Troll Revolution is, um, extent is an extension of my personality. Yep. Yep. So, uh, why I create Troll Revolution is because I want my own personality or I want my own way of designing yo-yos to come out in the market or come out to come out in a certain flavor. Yeah. So in this case, when I look for team teammates or team members, I, I want like-minded, I'm looking for like-minded players who, mm. who is like, who share the same thoughts to yo yo just like me. Okay. Like in this case, for me, um, having talent is good. But um, I prioritize hard work more than talent. Yeah. yeah. As, as like an extension so, of how you play, right? Yeah. 
for yeah. your life. Yeah, uh, it, it's a bonus. It's actually very good if you're talented. Yeah. In fact, I, I think most of my members right now are more talented than me. <laughs> like, like, what the hell? You see, like, we have like two double champions in my team. Yeah, yeah. Like, Who lock and uh, and Miggy? Yeah, but I would say they are equally as hardworking. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like to look for like minded players who are hardworking. Um, it so happens that they are also ha- they happen to be talented at the same time. Yeah. So that's that is a bonus. Mm. But I still place um hardworking as the top priority. Mm. Like in the past, let's see, like one of my ex members, I would say Connor Seals. Mm. Yeah, you can see that uh, he is really dedicated or focused or hardworking in the things that he does. Yeah, 100%. That's undeniable. Nobody, nobody can take that away from you. You can you can just see it. You can just see it. When you see a player perform on stage, you can just... Yeah. You can unconsciously see how much dedication or how much time he puts towards what they are doing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when I look at corner seals, play yo-yo, I could see like it's... He really puts in a lot of dedicated hours to make sure his combos is really refined and yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, so yeah. That, that is, so when I see that in a player, I kind of see like a similar reflection of myself in them mm. because I was equally as hungry as them in the in the mm. past. Okay. We 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 want we all your players want the same thing. We all want to win and we all want to try our, our best. Mm. be our best to win yeah. we want to try and win our best and if we want to lose we want to lose at our best too that's yeah, why yeah. I strongly all of us collectively agreed on mm. so yeah I try to look for um, basically hardworking people there are many hardworking uh, players or they are not on the team for yeah. now I would say mm. like, for example the Japanese players mm. Tomoki Oyama I don't know if you heard of him okay no, I, 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 yeah, he, he is one of the people on Instagram that actively posts mm. a trick circle using throw evolution yo-yo. Okay. So, although he's not on the team, I, um, we still, I still try to give him attention where he deserves, like where I think he has a good trick. Okay. When he has good tricks, I'll, I'll try to comment, I'll try to like on it. Um, is I fully there- understand that sometimes these people uh want wants to be on the team. I fully understand that. Mm. And, but I also fully understand that they are not there yet. Okay. But I wanna give them the attention that they deserve. Mm. Okay. And hopefully in the future I also want the best for them to be as good as they can. And hopefully next time I will be in a position to say, like, hey, your hard work has really shown. Yeah. Um come to Team. One example of this is the Vietnam champion Hun Hu Lok. Yep. Yeah. Before he he was on the team, he was actively using my yo yos for about almost two years, one to two years. Yeah, yeah. This is where I could see that his hard work really shines. Mm. And that's on the team. That's one perfect example. Hu Lok is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as a side note, how do you? Um, everyone in the Throw Revolution team, or basically the ones I've met, Miggy, Locke, um, even Suijin, um, you know, even Ryota Komatsu, they're very actively posting on on social media. How do you keep um, a team of yo-yo players engaged? Do you have like a Throw Revolution messenger that you kind of like check into every now and then do you have like a facebook group that you kind of pop into do you message them directly every now and then like how do you keep them all engaged you know uh, i i would say it's not it's not uh it's not because of me that uh that they are so good or so engaged in you i would say 90 percent is maybe 95 percent is all on their own interest, own motivation in the sport. Okay. Uh, I, like, like what I said before, right? I want to get like-minded players yep. to the team. Mm. So people who are in the same team with me generally shares the same passion as I have in YoYo. Okay. Generally share the same amount of competitors, yep. competitiveness, or the same amount of creative juices. Yeah. So naturally... Naturally, they, these are the people who loves to play yo-yo. Mm. So it's all on them. 
It's, yeah. it's all on them when they want to post on Instagram. I, I would say I don't play much. I don't play much um, role in trying to to make them better. Yeah. But I, I would I would like to believe that I give uh, um, I play a small factor to to their motivation. Mm. Like for example, sharing prototypes or sharing yeah. pictures or prototypes with them early before yeah. well ahead of the release date get get them excited about some new yo-yos. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I also tell them uh, if they need any competition advice, I'm. I'm here for them. Just mm-hmm. let them know I'm here for them. I don't, I don't like go out of my way to make sure that they're good. But I just let them know that if you need me, I'm here. And if you need any new yo-yos, just come to me. Um, let me know how I can help. Mm. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do for them. That's all. It's it's yep. not a lot. Probably the bare. Probably that's the most I could do, and probably the bare minimum I could. Well, yeah. I would say you bit still rest on them that's because they themselves they are motivated to play yo-yo so mm. I would say most of their successes or most of their, their achievements are because of them not not because of me I would say yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting because um even even going beyond the scope of yo-yoing, I feel as if you have like a a very deep kind of friendship with each of the people who are on Throw Revolution so do you do you kind of like check up on them every now and then and be like, Hey, what's up? How's it been going? Or is it kind of just a, like, here's the prototype. <laughs> Hope you have fun. Like, how do you, how do you keep such a close relationship with, with most of your throw revolution players? I think, I think the key word here is like, like we don't have to try, like you don't even, have, you don't have to, if you have to try to keep your relationship going, it's, then it's, <laughs> It's it, it, it is not real. It is not yeah, authentic. Okay. So I would say it's it's just we have we are on the same frequency. Yeah. The members that are on my team have the same frequency as me. Mm. As, have the same motivation or have the same perspective I have towards you doing or in life in general, as as long as you have the same frequency, you're on the same wavelength with anybody you meet. You just like you know, you just click instantly. Yep. Okay. Not, not only your your but in general life as well. So in this case for the your community, we just have the same frequency, same wavelength. We are just people who love playing yo yo, and we share the same competitiveness or same passion for yo yo. Mm. So that's where we generally click. Yeah. And that's how we. Yeah, that's how that's how our relationship uh, prosper because we don't really have to try and keep the sponsored. I don't really have to try and keep the sponsor member relationship. We just enjoy playing yo yo, and they enjoy using my yo yos too. So okay, sure. It, it takes two hands to clap, so it's a it's a I would say natural relationship okay yeah. that's 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 good to know um you know obviously you know um you do quite frequent trips to the philippines and you know we've we both traveled to vietnam together so that's also really mm-hmm. cool does um you know and it's interesting because you know you're a you're a singaporean based yo-yo company um, but you know, as far as I know, there, there weren't very, there weren't a whole lot of Singaporean players on throw revolution. So does physically traveling and meeting your players, you know, periodically for their competition, does that strengthen the bond you guys have together with one another? Yeah, I would say yes, because, um, it keeps them motivated too, because yeah. that is a period where, um, I think I would say your competition are not so frequent, I yeah. would say. So when I do your events there, when I do your competitions there, that that is what reignites the passion in in your yo, mm. because I would say generally the year community is is not as crazy as me. Like if you want to find another person like me, like Marcus Cole, or if you want to find another person like um Thor here Iqbal, or <laughs> find another person like Migi, he's on. It's difficult, you know, because yeah. most of us enjoy yo-yo just because we enjoy yo-yo. We, we don't want to... Yo-yo is some, for some of us in the yo community, <laughs> yo-yo is just a hobby. Mm. So we get inspired at different times. So when we have yo competitions like this, we generally, we, true evolution generally, we ignites the passion of the yeah. yo-yo community. 
community in that area mm. i would say okay yeah Sweet. All right. So, um, yeah, I, I think I just have like, that's, that's basically everything I kind of wanted to cover, but, um, yeah, it seems like, you know, you guys have been super, super busy with a whole lot of stuff. Is there, um, is there anything interesting coming on the throw revolution pipeline as of yet? Uh, we have some interest. Yeah, we have, I'm doing quite a lot of interesting things, but, uh, one of my main project is not, uh, towards the existing uh, community, one of my, I, I can't say it now because I don't I don't even know if it will be successful because yep. my main project right now is trying to get more new players to join the uh, community, sure. which it is a big challenge for I would say everyone nowadays. Yeah, even to the companies. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, yeah. So um, other than other than that, we still have our main stuff. Like we are coming up with. I could tell you we are coming out with some new yo-yos. Okay. This June. Yeah. Okay. And just well, timing I'm, the release I'm for AP? Main, yeah. For, uh, gearing up for AP. But mm. my main project is uh, outside of the year community right now. Sure. <laughs> okay. So if anyone's listening to this and they want to find more about you, if they don't know you already, um, what, what social media channels are you on? You're on. Uh... You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, Troll Evolution. Yeah. Or you can find my personal Instagram, Marcus Cole. Yeah. If you want to see my team members playing Yo Yo, Hui Jin, uh, Yota Komatsu, then yeah, follow Troll Evolution. Uh, they, have, they have really good tricks, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everyone in um, Throw Revolution is a very passionate Yo Yo player. Yeah, man. Like, do, do you see all their tricks? Oh, man, I, I think they. I think they're better than me right now, right now in terms of <laughs> actually one a, a question I have for you right now is um obviously you uh you know you've won worlds and you know you've you've been Singaporean national champion what six times now or is it uh actually I don't know yeah um, so, something crazy like that um <laughs> Uh, six to seven times, uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What is um? What does your practice routine look like today, in in comparison to say what it looks like leading up to Worlds, twenty? Uh, oh, right now I don't practice much actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I only practice maybe. Uh, but I I still have a uh, when it comes to competitions I care about. Yeah. I still take at least two months of preparation before the competition. Okay. To prepare something nice. For the competition. Mm. Yeah. All right, but it's it's it's, it's, it's not def- as crazy as last time. It's not as crazy as last time, but I still take time to prepare for competitions. Sure. Yeah. So, I uh, guess we'll uh, we'll we'll see you in AP. And are you looking to uh looking to take out the title again, or or take it out for the first time? Uh, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. I'm not too sure yet. Not too sure yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but well, yeah, I guess we'll see, yeah. right? Um, well, anyway, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, to be on the show, and um, yeah, it was a really insightful conversation. A lot of stuff I knew, and a lot of stuff we kind of attacked on a different angle to kind of really dig deep on it. But um, yeah, awesome conversation, and really, really enjoyed having it. Yeah, of course, anytime, man. <laughs> and yeah, you should come to Singapore sometime soon, even if it's not AP, you just. Come to Singapore and to visit me and your friends and your <laughs> stuff, you know. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. Cheers, Marcus. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I definitely did. I learned a lot from that. And even though I asked a lot of questions that I knew the answer to. Um, it was still very insightful to kind of hear it again more in depth and hopefully to share it with all of you. One other thing that I want to add that we, Marcus and I talked a little bit after the podcast formally stopped and something that was very valuable to me. This was incredibly, this is a point that I'm still thinking about to this day is that I told him that I was very motivated to win ANYC um, 2018. And Marcus has been a mentor of mine. So I send him freestyles every now and then. And with my NYC routine, I send it to him a little bit later. So he didn't want to say anything that would derail me. But one thing he said was, um, you 
looked very uncomfortable when you were doing this freestyle. And part of the reason was because I was actively um, monitoring how much I was missing. And so I was, I was getting my, um, my girlfriend at the time to negative click every single time I missed a string hit and record it in her, her little book. And I thought that was a very prudent way to go about it. But what that did was it altered my mindset from I need to land this trick to I need to not miss this trick. And it made me very, very nervous. So Marcus's advice would be like, man, just relax. Like I, he told me, he was like, I've seen some of your competitions when you were in China, you looked so relaxed, you looked so chilled out. And that is the mentality you need going into a contest because that is what is going to make you ultimately hit cleaner. And that was a huge insight for me. That's where the penny kind of dropped. And I was like, yes, data is important. Yes. Tracking your progress is important, but if it's at the cost of your competitive mindset or your state of flow, it's not worth it. So that was a final nugget of information, but yeah, thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, other than that, how did I do? Did you guys enjoy my interview style? Did I talk too much in this one? Did I not ask in any interesting questions? Is there anything you want clarification on from Marcus? If you guys enjoyed the podcast, please just dedicate five seconds to writing a review, putting a positive review so we go up in the rankings and share it with a yo-yoing buddy. And that really helped us out. There's no ads, nothing, completely free. So yeah, if you guys want to check out more Offset Yo-Yo Podcasts, the second episode, leave some feedback and I will see you guys next time.